English is a Latin based language. Now listen carefully. My argument is you do not understand the Bible. I do. Because Egypt was about martial arts. And Jesus refers to Egypt many times. It's in the Bible more than Israel. And Bethlehem is the house of bread. He said, eat this bread, drink this wine. Now listen carefully. The mark of the beast is Greco-Roman philosophy. Pythagoras is symbolic of the person who brought in the philosophy of the beast, whether he was or not. Because he was a Greco-Roman with a Western materialistic perspective like the Ashkenazi have on Judaism. That's why the Babylonian Tammud went to Kazaria and, you know, Ashkenaz, right? Ashkenazi, right? Because they have a Western materialistic perspective and that is anti-Christ. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. So if you have a worldly perspective, a banker, money lender perspective, you see what I'm saying? It's the beast. The beast symbolizes the various pagan philosophies that come from the idea that material, the material world is also a key ingredient in the spiritual world. And everything animal-like is consistent with your spiritual nature. When you look at the pagans, why were they savages? Because they tended to misinterpret Egyptian philosophy. And they were just thinking, oh, we're beasts. Ah, ah, instead of thinking mind, body, and soul and being deep, they were... You know, we're beasts. We have our little rituals, but it was shallow, right? It was shallow. It was empty. They were like paying lip service to God without even paying lip service to God. They were trying to. They were trying to connect to something. They had no idea what they're doing. They're crazy, white, animalistic people. You know, no offense. I'm part white. They had no idea. The true gospel was in Egypt. So therefore, the mark of the beast is, is a Western materialistic perspective. And the harlot represents feminism because witches were the first feminists. And so every aspect of feminism is to be found in witchcraft. That's why masonry is called the craft. It, it, it is the craft that connects the beast, the corporate structure of the world, the corporate secret society, Masonic building with materials, you know, from this world. Okay with a feminist eastern star movement that encompasses that, that everything you would expect witchcraft you have wiccans you have witchcraft you have buddhism you have different pagan philosophies that are inferior and so listen very carefully before you doubt me and say it's a theory the only way to understand it is to understand how people who walk in the light think. And since Jesus is subtly referring to Egypt constantly, you must understand that you have to look at it from the top of the pyramid perspective, especially when they say Joseph and these other people knew all the mysteries of Egypt and more, which means the mystery schools of Egypt were part of the structure of the, the holy knowledge. Okay, so Masons are those evil people who sided with the materialistic people who put the emphasis on the materialism in the mind, body, soul. Try another way to look at it is they are the ones who sided with set. Okay, who said, look, in this world, it's not right for you to take my wife, even if you are closer to God. That's part of their disagreement. Osiris said, no, if your wife likes me because I'm holier than you, you know. Handcuff the bitch or something, cuh? You know, and that's part of the disagreement, right? It was jealousy over the admiration of potential wives. It is a pervasive martial arts story from Africa that has been around for at least 10,000 fucking years, probably 100,000, I don't know. And it's part of the Nubian culture, which goes way back. Which one was first, the Nubians or Egyptians? Who were first, the Native Americans or the Europeans? And if Europeans start dressing up as Native Americans, were they looking like the Europeans? Were they Europeans or were they Native Americans? It's the same thing with Egypt. Which one came first, the Nubians or the Egyptians? The Egyptians were a mixed race as time went on. The Nubians were pure black. They gave them their culture. That's when the black dynasties came. Egypt's culture was rejuvenated. Why? Because it came from Nubia in the first place. And non-Nubians or non-true blacks, you know, people who deviated from God's plan, had no idea what they were doing. They, you know, so the mark of the beast is the mark of a bunch of animalistic, materialistic scum who have no idea about God. They just know that they're wrong and that they're liars. Once you accept that type, that type of philosophy, the snake, the rat, and other detestable, unclean birds like the dragon and the beasts, 
then you have taken on the worldly philosophy of masonry, you've mixed it with feminism, and together they will bring down the world. I know you think I'm lying. I know you don't want me to say this if you're a coward. But those of you who are brave with mind, body, and soul, you know that the descendant of Judah tells you the truth. I am the house of bread mixed with Judah, just like Joseph's descendants. Thank you. In conclusion, the Bible says, let he with wisdom calculate the number of the beast. Calculate. Who's more calculating than a martial artist? Is timing not a key element of martial arts? I figured this out all on my own, given the cards in my hands, and my personal life experiences. Therefore, God naturally revealed them to me. And probably ancestors, saints, and angels, you know, were in accord. And certainly they were in accord, but probably smiling as well. I deserve my rightful place, and every last one of you knows it. I've displayed superior mind, body, and soul. I've conquered every priesthood or martial arts school of thought or, you know, race-based martial arts school or every type of martial arts school in America in the most traditional challenge. And the Nubians who, you know, made martial arts culture, one could argue, were all about tradition. That's why they restored it in Egypt during the, um, I think it was the 25th dynasty. So we all know, we all know that just like in the history of Egypt, every black person is inclined to restore the truth to these other non-blacks. And that is also the story of uh, the Bible about how whites who saw it the way that the Africans saw it, you know, would um, be per crucified by the people who saw it the way, who saw it the way the horse guy saw it. And the people who saw it the way the temple of Set, you know, the gays and all these sickos who, you know, did material, you know, did anything to make their body feel good, including plugging other men in the butt. That's part of why homosexuality, Satanism has to do with the material body. So if you defy God to make yourself feel good, you're complex, your mind is dark, your actions are dark, you know, your eye is dark, your perception is dark, you know, you don't go to heaven. You're an unrepentant sinner. Any church that says we accept gays and, and, and leaves them with the impression that you're not supposed to make it clear to them that what they're doing is wrong and they need to change is part of Babylon's system by default. And we know this. Any church that doesn't emphasize Afro-Asiatic part of the Christian experience must be part of Babylon's system. Because why would you obscure these things or circumvent or go around them? Right? To unite us? To unite us for what? One nation under Babylon? A lot of these churches take government funding. They're on the money lenders' payroll. So how can they then turn around and say, you know what? We are doing this to unite us. What the fuck are you talking about? You know, it's under one kingdom of hell, which is going to cause God. It's going to trigger God. Just like fucking if I slap somebody, it triggers the fight or flight reaction. We're going to trigger the fight or flight reaction with God. And I give you a hint. Just because angels have wings doesn't mean God gives a shit about flying away. God doesn't back down from nothing. So when you trigger the fight or flight reaction in the person who made us in his image, he's going to fight. This on my uncle is the true gospel as God revealed it to me. As part Judah, part Ebo, part Egyptian, part white, martial artist, who was always seeking the truth and seeking the kingdom of heaven. I sought it with martial arts timing and calculation, and God gave me the answers. And I promise you, a Greco-Roman perspective is the mark of the beast. They are the gays, they are the pedophiles, pedestry. Older men in secret societies recruiting young men into secret societies made for men. I think, what are they, the Demolay or something? There's like these little groups for men and there's the, the golden girls, you know. Now, not all of them are molested, okay? Not all of them are attractive. But I assure you, when all is said and done, the most attractive women in society are being sexually immoral with secret societies. And I see the good in people. The reason why I fall in love with the good women right away is because I see that God in her, because I have martial arts perception, and I want to explore that feminine energy of God, God's love, to see if she's my soulmate. So I fall in love right away, and I get hurt a lot, and I'm looking for that soulmate, and she has been concealed or killed, and I will never forgive Babylon, because now I must walk alone. After countless betrayals, I must stop searching, and I must fight alone, you know? And when tonight comes and no one supplies me with a suitable helper, I promise on all my ancestors, I'll be a fool not to see that women have betrayed me. 
I'm sorry I have to say it like that, but the story has to be told. I'm sorry I have to say things in a way that makes people look bad, but the Bible does the same. Babylonians, Sodomites, Hittites, you name it. It needs to be done. This is the true gospel. It is my onerous responsibility. And as things offend my better sensibilities and trigger my righteous indignations, I have expressed it uncut as God would have me do. And I make no apologies for it. And I did so being oppressed by Romans and fake Jews and all the oppressors you can think of in society, from psychiatrists to cops to political groups and gay groups and so on. Thank you.